everybody, it's Julie, and today I'm making a holiday gift card holder in the shape of a fun interactive mailbox. This is the Happy Mail die, and it's so much fun to pop open, and there's a gift card tucked inside. So I'm going to be foiling my design, but you could stamp yours, uh, heat emboss on it, uh, emboss it with texture folders, whatever you want but I am going to do foiling. So I'm firing up the Gemini foil press and this system's been discontinued, but you can uh, use the Spellbinders foil system. It works very similarly. So I've already die cut the Happy Mail mailbox from some Canson XL watercolor paper. And then I'm going to decorate it with the hot foil stamping using the Santa Mail hot foil stamps. I'm gonna position that exactly where I want that to go and use a piece of washi tape to anchor that in place. Now I do need to keep in mind where the flag is gonna go. Um, the first time I did this, I didn't think about that. And so I was like, oh, that was not smart. <laughs> So I'm giving you a heads up. Think about whatever else you want to put on there um, to make it look, you know, balanced and everything as you're planning where you're going to put all these things. So now I'm going to take a piece of foil. I have an envelope that I keep scraps of foil in and they're perfect for things like this. And I just use the washi tape as a hinge to keep that uh, hot foil stamp in place and then slipped that piece of foil with the ugly side against the paper and the pretty side against the hot foil stamp design. So then I'm gonna flip that over and lay it down onto the preheated hot foil press and I hit the timer um, to heat up the stamp for about 16 seconds and then sent it through my, sent the whole platform through my uh, Gemini Junior. And now I'm gonna set that aside to cool off and grab a little piece of watercolor paper that I cut to the same dimensions as a gift card. And I wanted to use the two with the little address lines there on it and get that foiled onto this as well as the postage and cancellation or cancellation marks. And I do wanna make sure that even though my foil is overlapping, I'm gonna tuck it underneath um, that first piece of foil I put down because I want to make sure that the cancellation and postmark actually foil the whole design. And there's going to be just a slight overlap there. That's fine. Or you can foil them one at a time if you prefer. That's easier for you. But I just figured might as well just do it all in one fell swoop. So I got them all anchored with washi tape and I'm waiting for the machine to reheat back up again. And I wanted to reveal the Santa mail on the mailbox because it turned out so gorgeous. I had a little bit, just a tiny bit of overfoiling. So I'm just gonna use the Tombow Mono Zero Eraser to just erase those real quickly. And then I'm gonna take my little, this is gonna look like a little letter, and I'm gonna position that on the uh, hot plate there. And then you'll notice I have a shim. I'm using a 110 pound Nina Solar White shim that I anchored onto that hot, um, the, the hard plate there. Um, with washi tape so that it doesn't shift around on me or get jammed in the Gemini when it goes through. Now here you can see where I accidentally, because of that overlapping, I got foil on there. And uh, I'll talk about that in a minute, but you can then go in and erase any overfoiling with that little eraser. And if that doesn't do the job, take a Tombow Mono Sand Eraser and just get in there and that'll clean all that uh, overfoiling really nicely. And I did want to mention for the hot foil stamp that got foil um, stamped onto it, you can just take some acetone or nail polish remover and a cotton uh, ball and just rub it away. It cleans off spiffy and it does not harm your hot foil stamp at all. So I decided on the mailbox I wanted to go ahead and put that really pretty swirly thing underneath just for added. <laughs> elegance and extra fancy. So I just went ahead and lined that up and you'll notice where I positioned the washi tape was down underneath so that I wasn't actually pressing any washi tape against the already foiled parts because I don't want to accidentally lift any foil off of that with the stickiness of the washi tape. So now I can go ahead and let that cool and peel the whole thing away and look at that, that pretty swirl. Oh, it looks so awesome. Very, very luxe. Yeah. So now it's time to put the whole thing together, right? So you want to do all your stamping and hot foiling when it's flat. Now I'm going to crease all the fold lines very firmly. And because I'm using watercolor paper, it's pretty thick. So I'm going to use a bone folder to help me crease those fold lines. Um, I don't seem to have enough strength in my hands to really get a good crisp uh, fold unless I use a bone folder. 
Now I'm going to grab, um, in some cases, where a fold line might be too close to a cut edge uh, for that lid on the mailbox right there. There's a cut line, and I don't want to accidentally burst it because there's perforations there. So I used a, a, a Starbucks card there, what a credit card, whatever you got, to just kind of... Um, allow me to keep the paper in place without it buckling when I'm trying to crease that particular folded area. So now I'm going to take some double-sided sticky tape and I really recommend for things like this that you use some score tape. Um, they have a really nice skinny one that's about one eighth of an inch that I use for really tight spots and depending on you know what I'm, my mood is um, I might add some tape there in those really skinny areas on the die cut shape and then I'll come back in with some quarter inch wide uh, double-sided tape there to get those bigger flaps. So here you can see I'm actually going to position the flap that's closest to the lid. I'm going to actually mount it or tape it or glue it on the outside of the mailbox when I assemble everything, but these other two flaps I'm going to tuck to the inside. I think it just gives a nicer finish and helps the uh, mailbox just maintain its overall outside shape. So now I'm going to go ahead and remove the liner paper from everything um, that I put around the little mailbox door and that one flap because I'm going to adhere to the outside. And then, like I said, the other two flaps, I'm just going to tuck to the inside. I think that works better. And you have plenty of room there to tuck the gift card inside. And you're going to be able to uh, glue all your embellishments on there. So I'm going to attach the flag with some foam mounting tape. And I have some holly from the uh, North Pole Greetings set. And I just had stamped a bunch of that and die cut it and had it ready to go. And it looks really pretty on the mailbox. And there you go. I'm all dressed up. That was super quick and easy, and you'll notice I've got a little gold tone uh, mini brad there to be the handle on the mailbox. And then I can just tuck my gift card right there inside and fold those flaps toward the inside and remove the liner paper and press it down firmly. And I didn't do that on this one because I actually want to use it and I need to load that gift card before I seal it inside. Alrighty, that's how you put together the Happy Mail mailbox gift card holder. Thanks for watching.